بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك نبيك محمد بن عبد الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد we give thanks to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making it possible for us to be here today we beseech allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to preserve our life upon goodness i bear witness that there is nobody worthy of worship in truth except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i bear witness that the messenger muhammad <clears throat> sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a message to the whole world. May the peace and benediction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on the noble, noble soul of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is pure as old, his companions and all Muslims in day of reckoning. <clears throat> Excuse me. After this, our viewers, we greet you with the greetings of peace, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, inshallah, we shall look at some unique characteristics of Islam. When we say Islam, what are the distinctive features of Islam that make Islam stand out? from others what makes it to differ from others what are those unique things that make islam stand out among others we shall look at it inshallah and we are going to look at seven if allah permits inshallah we might be able to treat the seven and if not then we shall continue next program islam is an arabic word that is derived from a trilateral verb sin lam and mean but is having a radical air which is a which is uh, aslama aslama yuslimu Aslim Islaman, meaning to submit, that is Islam, to submit, that is the meaning of Islam. Therefore, simply if you are asked what is Islam, submission. Submission to whom? Submission to our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission, submit our selfish desire, our self-centeredness, our own reasoning our own understanding, the way we perceive things, we submit it to the dictate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This religion has some distinctive characteristics, like I've said, which are unique. And I want to start by number one. The name of the religion itself, Islam, is unique. You will discover that if the other religions is either the religion is named after a race or a tribe or a nation or group of people. The name of Islam, Islam is not named after a race, it's named after no race, after no tribe, after no ethnic group, after no people. That is the uniqueness of Islam. Islam is Islam. Islam is not, for example, when we look at Judaism, that is the Jews, or we look at Hinduism, named after the Hindus, but Islam is not like that. It is not named after a personality. The personality can be the founder. It can be an hero or it can be a role model. 
But that is not Islam. Islam is not Mohammedanism. And the first example I give, Islam is not Arabism, the Arab race, or the tribe, or the Arab people. Islam is not a religion named after the Arabs, so that we can say Islam is Arabism. No. And it's not named after a personality. Islam is not Mohammedanism. There was an attempt for, by some people some years back, maybe around two, three hundred years ago, trying to ascribe the name Mohammedanism to Islam. And when you read literatures today, even Islamic studies book written by non-Muslims, such as the Orientalists, you discover that they will be calling Islam Mohammedanism there, or Mohammedanism. It was a name they want to ascribe to Islam, but Islam rejects it. It is rejected because Islam is not named after a personality. It's not Mohammedanism. Like many other religions were named after both local here and internationally, you can think of many. Like Confucianism after Confucius, Buddhism after Gautama Buddha, and many others like that. Islam is not named after a place, like a city a town, or a village, or a particular spot. Islam is not Mechaism, or Mechanism, and it's not Medinanism, la, 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 la. Islam is not named after a place. That is why Islam is one of the unique characteristics of Islam. It distinct itself. The religion of Islam was named by Allah, the creator, of the religion, the one who revealed the Quran to the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you check Quran five, ayah three, that is Surah Al-Ma'ida. Towards the end of that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Ali yawma akmal tulakum dinakum." Today or this day, I have perfected your religion for you. And completed my favor upon you. Look at the two adjectives. Perfection and completion. Allah said he has perfected the religion. But he has not named the religion. I have perfected your religion for you. And I have completed my favor upon you. And I have approved Radhi to and pleased for you Islam as your religion. So look at the three adjectives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Akbal to perfected. That's first thing. At mem to completed. And the third one, Rodia, Allah is pleased with it. Sometimes somebody can choose a team for a group of people, maybe because of their own choice, but he's not pleased with that choice. It happens when there are many things to be chosen. Then somebody says, this is what I have chosen. Is that what you want? You will even be querying. Do don't, why don't you like this? He said, this much. Okay, take it. But he's not happy with it. He's not... Uh, is, the leader is not there. He does not favor it. He doesn't approve it. But he gave it because of their desire. But here Allah said, Wa radhi to lakum Islam adina. I'm pleased with Islam for you. That's your religion. That's the name of your religion. Religion, Islam has that unique characteristic that it is named by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second distinctive characteristic of Al Islam is the name of the followers of the religion, our name. It is also given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. It wasn't given to us by some group of people or some intellectuals or some philosophers or some people and it does not happen by accident. In fact, it has been given previously prior to the advent of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. If we look at Quran, 
Surah Tul Hajj, Surah 22, Ayah 78. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, A'udhu billahi sami ila alimi mina shaytani rajimi min hamzi wa nafikhi wa nafsi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa jahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi'i. And strive for Allah with his striving due to him. Huwa jitabakum. He has chosen you. Allah has chosen you, the Muslims. But he hasn't named the, 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 the followers. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي دِينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ And Allah has not placed any difficulty for you or upon you in the religion. Any difficulty as Allah, placed, Allah has not placed it on us in the religion. مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim, This path that you had, this part of Islam, is the part of your father. Who is that father? Allah mentioned the name Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Because Ibrahim, alayhi salam, preaches monotheism. True monotheism. That is maintaining the unity of Allah. When we say oneness of Allah, some people can explain oneness of Allah in many ways. They can say three in one, two in one. Uh, like in uh, when you study religious studies, if you are a student of religious studies, they tend to tell you as a student that all religions recognize one divine or one divinity or one supreme being. Therefore, all religions are essentially the same. That is why this topic is imperative that, no, we are not same. Our own Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> we maintain its unity. When we say oneness of Allah, we maintain the unity of Allah in his lordship. What do we mean by maintenance of unity of Allah in his lordship? In, in the in creation that is non-create other than Allah. Allah creates or he created all creatures without assistance or help from any other being. That is <coughs> unity of Allah, maintaining the unity of Allah in his lordship. The second implication of maintenance of the unity of Allah in his lordship is Allah sustains the creation. Everything creation is sustained by Allah. There is no creature in this life. Illa ala law iriskuha. Ala law iriskuha. That's what Allah said in the Quran. There is no creature except that his sustenance is the sole responsibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he provides for the creature. And the third one is he controls the affair. So we maintain the unity of Allah in control. Maintaining the unity of Allah in his lordship implies three things. Maintain his unity that he is the only one that creates he created without assistance, without help from anybody. Number two, we maintain the unity of Allah in his sustenance. He's the only one that sustains the creature. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ma uridu minkum min riskin. No sustenance do I demand from you. Wa ma uridu minkum an yuta'imun. And I do not request or demand that you should feed me. In Allah wa razak, Allah is the provider, the sustainer. The lokuwatil matin is the one that is very strong such that it cannot be broken. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is, when we say monotheism, Allah is one, <coughs> that is the first thing. Second one is maintenance of the unity of Allah in his worship. We maintain the unity of Allah in his worship by worshipping none other than Allah. Do not call unto any other than Allah. We have from among men. These people have set partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have partners. Hmm? And then, yuhibbuna unka hubbillah. Allah said they love these deities the way they love Allah. Walladina amanu ashaddu hubban lillah. But the believers 
the love they have for Allah is stronger than the love those have for their deities. So we maintain the unity of Allah in our worship. We pray to Allah alone, Allah Akbar. You don't mention Muhammad in our worship. When we say Allah, when we want to pray now, we say Bismillah. We don't say Bismi Muhammad. We say in the name of Allah. We don't say in the name of Muhammad. If you check Quran from Surah Al Fatiha from begin to the end, all the prayers there, all the worship there, you never see anybody calling unto other than Allah there. Well, that is another topic anyway. And the third one is we maintain the unity of Allah in his names and attributes. The unity of Allah in his name. You don't call Allah with a name other than what he himself has called himself or his prophet has used to call him. And you don't give any attribute to Allah except the attributes that are ascribable to Allah in his holy book and the authentic sunnah. <clears throat> Why do I say that? I say that because of this ayah I was translating that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي دِينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ Allah has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion. مِلَّا تَعَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim. It is the part of your father Ibrahim because Ibrahim maintains the unity of Allah in his lordship, in his worship, in his names and attributes. That means he worship Allah alone. وَسَمَّاكُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَفَعَدْ عَلَهَا هُوَ هُنَ يَعُودِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Huwa, that is Allah himself, Samakum li Muslimin, is the one that has named you as Muslims. That is the name of the followers of the religion of Islam. Muslims. Okay? Muslimun. We are Muslim. How do we know we are Muslims? Allah told us that that is our name. We are Surah 22, Ayah 78, which is Surah al Aj. Min Kobil. Allah is saying it's not during the time of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that have made you as Muslim. Mean probably even proud to the coming of the messenger of Allah. Since the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mankind. Wa fi adha. And now that the messenger of Allah has been raised. Li takuna. Li yakuna rasulu shahidan alaykum. In order that the messenger may be a witness over you. وَتَكُونُ شُهَدَاء عَلَى نَاسِ And you will be witness over men. فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَى Then the ayah continues. So what did I bring out there? The import of what I have brought out there is that the name Muslim that you hear, that you bear, is not a figment of imagination of anyone. Rather, that is what Allah has called us in our book. It is unique to the to the religion of Islam to Muslims. It is distinctive. How does, if you ask them, what is the name of your religion? If it tells you, then what is the name of the followers of this religion? It tells you. We now ask him, who named that religion? And who named you the followers as that? Is that what Allah has told you? So in our own scripture, in the Quran, it is there. And uh, the third one, which is the scripture of Islam is also distinctive. It's also distinctive. The scripture of Islam, which is Al Quran. Number one, under this, that is number three. The name of the Quran itself has been given by Allah as the Quran. It is not given by a group of intellectuals or researchers or some other people. It is Allah Himself that has named Quran the Quran in the Quran. And let me tell you, the Quran has been mentioned about 70 times in the Quran itself. There are, if you open some scriptures, aside from the cover, back cover, the previous, the introduction, in the scripture proper, the name given to that scripture, you can never find it inside that scripture. But that is not the case with the Quran. Allah told us that the name of this Quran is Quran. And it is mentioned in nothing less than 70 times or 70 places. It's in the Quran itself. You understand? Then the third thing under this one is that the language of the Quran is also mentioned in the Quran. The language of the Quran is what? Mentioned in the Quran in nothing less than 10 places in the Quran. For uh, clarity, though you can Google it, but let me tell you, it's mentioned in the Quran. Surah 12, Ayah 2, which is Surah uh, Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
mentioned in that ayah, inna anzalna Quranan Arabiya. Surely we have revealed it as an Arabic Quran. La'allakum ta'akilun. So that you may understand. So the Quran, Allah told the messenger of Allah that he revealed it in Arabic so that the messenger can understand. Inna nahnu nazzalna alika dhikra li tubayyina li nasi ma nuzila ilayim. We have revealed the Quran to you so that you can explain it to people what has been revealed to you. So Quran is not uh, speaking in tongue such that if you listen to it, you don't understand what the Quran is saying. It's a language which is Arabic. In fact, there are some people that lay claim, or particularly a Jew in Medina during the time of Messenger of Allah, laid claim that he is the one that taught the Messenger of Allah Al-Quran. He is the one that taught the Messenger of Allah Al-Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, alamu, We knew, we know, that they are saying, Inama yu'allimuhu basharun. Somebody was teaching the messenger of Allah al-Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Lisanu ladi yulihidun ilayhi a'ajami. But the tongue of the one that has been ascribed, that is the one that people claim taught the messenger of Allah quran his tongue is not Arabic, a'ajami. It's a foreign tongue. That person, people said, teaches the prophet al-Quran does not speak Arabic. Wahada, but this Quran, Lisanun Arabiyun Mubin, is a clear Arabic, undiluted one, pure one, classical, that is not diluted. So, Allah is denying, telling us to know the falsehood of their claim that uh, it, somebody taught the Quran. In Sahih Bukhari, a man that a man accepted Islam among the Jews, later he renegated from Islam, so he become an uh, apostate. Then he died. After his death, he was buried. When he was buried, the second day they found out that the grant the land has rejected the corpse. They met the corpse outside. So his people said, "Oh, the Muslims were annoyed because he said he's the one teaching their prophet Quran." So they now dug, they redug that grave, making it to be deeper. Second day, they still met it. I mean, that third day. They still dig, dig, dug the ground very, very deep. Yet the land continues to reject the corpse of this man who claimed that is the one that taught the prophet Al-Quran. There is one man again that was mentioned that he taught the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Quran. His name is Bahira. Ra'i, Bahira. Bahira was a Christian, uh, Jew, a Christian monk or Jewish monk. Hmm? Bahira Ra'i. So when the messenger of Allah was young, he followed his uncle Abu Talib. He followed him to Syria. So on their way, when they were about to enter the town, that man is a monk and also a learned person in Tarot. He now called the uncle of the messenger of Allah, Abu Talib, that, look, <clears throat> this man, that is this boy, don't allow him to enter our town. He will be killed out of jealousy. What happened? He saw that there was a cloud over the head of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But by that time, the messenger of Allah has not been uh, appointed or proclaimed as messenger of Allah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Agent Jibril has not been sent to him. He was still young. But he has seen it that one of the signs of the messengers of Allah, according to their scripture, Taurat and Injil, is that when they are going, you see cloud forming a kind of sheet over the head of the person. So he now told him to go back. So Abu Talib took Prophet Muhammad back to Makkah. Some historians now claim that within that short time, it was Bahira that taught the messenger of Allah Quran. So the, the refutation of the Quran here suffices because that man is not an Arab. He doesn't understand classical Arabic. Arabic. You understand that the Quran also challenged the doubters many places in the Quran that they should produce the like of. 
And somebody who is not an Arab, who is not a Bedouin Arab, somebody that has been raised uh, in, 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 that was not raised in city, he couldn't produce the like of the Quran because Quran is classical Arabic, right? Therefore, Bahira, that accusation or that allegation cannot stand the test of the Quran, that that one does not understand Arabic. How could it have taught Prophet Muhammad the Quran? It's just like in Nigeria, somebody who does not understand the Hausa language, there is a poet that reads his poem in Hausa language, the person claims that he is the one that taught him that poetry. How possible? Or you go to Yoruba land, their poem is called Ewi. So somebody is now reading, rendering his own poem in his language, and one Igbo man, or one Ausa man, or Igala, or Ibira said, I'm the one that taught him. You know, it's going to become a laughing stock of the people. So Quran, more than about 10 places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that this Quran is Arabic. Like I've mentioned, this topic we are going to continue because the aspect of this Quran is very important. Many people do not understand what the Quran is in reality. So, here the Quran <clears throat> has been mentioned about 70 times in the Quran that the name of this book is Quran. Also, it has been mentioned in nothing less than 10 places in the Quran that the language of the Quran is Arabic language. You can go and go Google it, you will see it. It is going to be mentioned to you. Though I have it here, but time will not permit me to be reading the ayah to you one by one. Inshallah ta'ala, in the next episode we shall continue with these distinctive characteristics of the Quran which is one of the unique characteristics or distinguished distinctive features of Al-Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us aright. Thank you for staying with us and I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of what we have said so far. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رمضان مبارك